Okay, looks like we're recording. This is a uh, another uh, session here, and uh, you probably can't read this, but where the arrow is pointing on the lower left-hand side of the screen. There is actually a significant amount of game information presented. First, it tells me what movement phase it is, and, and it's now the French movement phase. I've just completed that. It's turn two of 36. It's uh, daytime. The visibility is 20 hexes. The weather is clear. The movement cost is 100%. In other words, whatever the counter indicates. Artillery fire is 100%. Non-artillery fire is 100%. Um, and those will change as weather happens. For instance, if it starts raining, your non-artillery fire may drop to almost zero because you've got muskets and... Um, you know, if they get wet, uh, their primer won't uh, work and neither will a musket. Uh, artillery fire, um, that may uh, decrease in effectiveness because with, with heavy rain, uh, it cuts down your range and your effectiveness of fire. So, and your movement cost. Certainly with rain, even on roads, they'll turn muddy and... Uh, your movement will decrease. So uh, these things will all have effects and you can see them at a glance at the bottom of the screen. It's really handy they're there because it and it indicates when it's getting to be dusk because at night your uh, combat range is only one hex and um, you pick up 50 fatigue points each time you move or fire. So if your unit is going to be active, you know, it's pretty much going to be exhausted in a couple turns. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out. So now we're in the French movement phase. I've uh, concluded that, and so we're going to go to the next phase which is the uh, Allied Defensive Fire. Okay, that uh, the only unit to fire was uh, this unit right here, this uh, skirmish, and it fired on the cavalry unit and got three casualties, which is typical for skirmish fire. I mean, you get three, five, maybe six casualties. So that's pretty light. And so for French offensive fire, I don't really have any. So we're going to go to the next phase, which is French melee. I don't have any of that. Now, allied movement. Now we should see some stuff happen. Okay, another couple units popped up right there, right at the head of this trail. So there, they're going to be headed towards uh, Pyramont here. There's no doubt about that. It's a bunch of skirmishers. So obviously I'm going to occupy that right away and then I'll have to get a unit up here so they don't go down this trail. But see, that's typical first objective for the British. They try to get across these hedges and then uh, occupy this area right here. What else we got? Oh, some more units popped up right here. We're on the uh, Linde front now. Uh, some more units are massing right here. There's a unit popped up right there, right in front of this line over here. Trying to skirt around it, I guess. I mean, it's kind of suicidal having a lone infantry unit wander in the midst of cavalry uh, regiments. But he's sticking to the woods because he doesn't want to be charged. Okay, some, some units are disappearing right here in St. Ahmad. I don't know where they're going. Some units popped up here. 
These units are, are coming out of St. Amand. I don't know where they're going. Why didn't they take the road? They're just going out here. There's artillery battery that popped up there. See, that's what makes the game interesting. The stuff is popping up and uh, and disappearing, depending on what you can see. That's a nice thing about AI. You could never duplicate this in a board game. Oh, a couple units popped up right here. All right. A lot of movement is taking place out of my line of sight. Okay, so that's all that happened. Now it's French defensive fire. Well, I don't have any, really. It's allied offensive fire, so I imagine, yep, that, that cavalry unit got fired on again. That was the only fire, three casualties. So it's racked up six. Allied melee, none. So we're down to French movement again. It's the third turn. Okay. Let's get the jump dialog box and go to the Quadra front. Okay. These British units. I don't think they moved any closer. They're probably waiting to see if I charge them. And I won't, only because it won't make much of a difference. What happens is they may or may not get disordered and they'll just retreat. They, w they won't get eliminated, I don't think. So it's a waste of time to charge them. And they, if they come up next to me, they might cause a couple of casualties, but then I will charge them. But I don't want to stir up a hornet's nest if I don't have to. So, okay, all I see is three stacks here, but you can see there's a bunch of uh, skirmishers there. This uh, battalion is still in this pass. And that's all I can see. I'm sure there's more than that, in fact. There's a whole division of uh, the, the the Dutch somewhere around here, a whole division, but I can't see any of it. I don't know where it is. Okay, so. We've got the second brigade here, the lead two units. The third unit is the first brigade, so... The lead two we're going to send in here. And where do I want to go? I guess right there. Oh, now by me moving into this hex, you can see I've disclosed another unit, another British unit here. I don't know what it is. There's a question mark on it, but it's there. So lurking. Okay, now the next two units are 1st Brigade, then there's a 2nd Brigade. So I'm going to send the 1st Brigade units further down the road here, see if I uncover anything in Tai Li. That's as far as I can go. Okay, now, here's a 1st Brigade unit right down here, and here's the path that goes to this, uh, uh, what the hell is it, uh, Chateau. So I'm going to take this unit and march it up the path here. The one behind it is 1st Brigade. 
Here I've got 2nd Brigade, 2nd Brigade, 2nd Brigade. Okay, so these three Oh, what do I do now? Oh, I put 2nd Brigade in this. Jeez. Well, I put 2nd Brigade in this city, or in this uh, village. Well, that's okay. This is, so this is a 1st Brigade one, but it was close, so I guess that's okay. So I'll send these second brigades. Make sure I get in that chateau. I don't want uh, the British to get in there. And I got one more second brigade battalion, which I'll send up in this village hex. And then this is first battalion. First Brigade Battalion. Well, what should I do with that? Well, I think the most immediate threat is are these uh, skirmishes moving across the stream. So I'm going to send the first, this battalion to follow the other one. And these, these two battalions out here are actually just temporary placeholders to see if I can spot the uh, British cavalry units. This uh, this artillery belongs with the 5th Division which is comprised of the 1st and 2nd Brigade. So I'm going to send that to Piriamont. Because if something more than the skirmish comes around here, I can fire at it. So this division now will head East. It's making pretty good progress up this road. Come on. Okay, whoops. Now, here's a bunch of supply trains and an engineer. That's kind of lower quality stuff, so I'm going to start to move this other division right behind the red one.
better have a strong right index finger for this game because you're working this clicker a lot. In fact, a couple times after I've done this all day, my finger played out. Okay, that's all there is here. I'll just move this stuff over. Okay, so then we've got a cavalry brigade here. Uh, it's a small one. I'm looking if I can use it up here, but this terrain is is pretty disadvantageous for cavalry, so I'm not going to even bother to put it up there. I'll move it, move the cavalry here parallel to the infantry on the road. Okay, I've got this very small cavalry brigade. It's only two regiments. I'll move that away. These are working out nicely here, I think. And then I'll move this much bigger cavalry brigade right behind it. And I'll think, I think for the moment, I'll keep these two cavalry brigades right here. Let me turn this guy to the left. Whoop. So he can charge if he needs to. Ah. I don't know why that happens. I don't think I hit anything. It just changes like that. I'll turn this guy to the left. See, you can see where the arrows point. Uh, that's where they charge in that direction. So you got to be careful that these arrows are pointed the right way because if something unexpected happens and they can charge. Now this artillery, I'm going to bring in here a little and this artillery I'm going to turn it one click to the left because now it can fire in this area here see now now the British is, is keeping their battalion back one hex from the crest and you can see its height of 11 in front of them whereas I'm at 10 and if they were on the edge here I could fire my artillery at them but since they're one hex back I can't so that's kind of a clever strategy to make sure your unit isn't fired on you just keep one hex back from the, the crest now these units, I probably can't see them because I've got a cavalry brigade here that'll block my line of sight. But if anybody tries to move down this road or out of these this, these woods or through these croplands, I'll be able to fire on them with this battery. 
So, okay. That's everything. Uh, let's get the jump box and go down here to this core way down here. That's everything in the quarter bra area. Meanwhile, we still keep making steady progress to the north with this core. And this is the Cavalry Brigade. And here we go. Here's the infantry. Boy, making great progress on this turnpike. Oop, come on. Now let me take a sip of water here. Okay, back to business. Yeah, I think uh, Wargaming Design Studio has done all of the big Napoleonic battles. They've even done Spain. Maybe they've missed a couple, but I don't think so. Because in some games, you get several battles. Like, I think Leipzig, you also get Dresden. And like in Waterloo, you get several battles. You get four of them. So I think they've covered most of, if not all of the Napoleonic. They've also covered, um, I think, all of the American Civil War. And they've covered a lot of World War II. Not all of it, I'd say. Mm. There were a lot of battles in World War II. Too, but I'll bet they've covered about a third of them, especially on the Eastern Front. I mean, there were the big campaigns, that's true. Like if you want to say in 1942, Case Blue, but then, you know, that involves the caucus as well as the drive on Stalingrad, and there were a lot of battles along the way. And in 1943, on the Eastern Front, there was, I think, basically just Kursk, and they have that one. I don't, and they've got some in 44 and 45 even. So I don't know, they, at least they covered a third. In World War One. I, I think, well, they've covered the significant ones. They covered the West, uh, the East, and this is in 1914, because after that, you know, the I don't know if anybody would like to play a World War I game after that, except that maybe in 1918, where they have the German offensive. But, you know, they went into trench warfare, and so it'd be an uninteresting game. You'd be fighting for two hexes, and if you're lucky, you would get to occupy the hex, and that's about it. But they've got the... The Eastern Front, 
which is Tannenberg, and I think the Masurian Lakes. And then 1914 was done, and I think they part of it is uh, the Austrian front. And then in the west, they have, you know, France. And that was about it. I mean, Gallipoli and all those other ones were later. But before they settled down to trench warfare, basically in the winter of 1914, you know, it was a mobile war. It was almost like the Civil War, the American Civil War. But then after that, it, it became the American Civil War in 1864, where as soon as uh, a Confederate army would stop marching, they'd start entrenching immediately. Then they have a couple oddball periods. Plus they have, uh, I think most of the na naval camp, well, they don't have Philippine Sea. Most of the naval campaigns in World War II they have uh, what they call a Pacific War, but I think it's just the the game Matrix game came out with the Civil uh, the uh, Pacific War, and it's really hugely complicated. Jesus Christ, is that game? Where's the road here? I don't even see it. Let me check on this hex to see which hex side the road runs on. Oh, down there. Okay. Oh, I see. I've got two columns here in the same hex. And they've got one game. They've got Coral Sea. Coral Sea and Midway. I've got that one. Uh, and then they've got another game, the Naval Battles Around Guadalcanal. And actually, I mean, Philippine Sea is not really a balanced game. I mean, it's not like if you play the Japanese, you're going to win. Just how bad you lose. And most people don't want to play a game like that. But it doesn't have any ancients or uh, medieval and the big, big medieval one would be the Crusades or the Siege of Constantinople. I mean, there would be some interesting games there. And then you, you have the Roman Empire would be a whole slug of games. And uh, then Alexander the Great. So you could have... And I, I really like the ancient period, so I hope they come out with some before I croak because I would like to play them. They'd be interesting games. But after that, I don't know if there's much in the way of interest in war games you could develop. Okay, all those guys have moved. Now I'll move. Jesus, look at all that supply. Oh, they have some modern games, too. I suppose they'll do one of the Ukraine in time. The Ukraine that's being fought now. But that that that'll be more like World War One. Cause it's all artillery. Artillery and drones. Come on. My finger must be getting weak. It's not registering the click. Okay. Okay, well, I'm down at the end of the map still. Okay, so I have done all the movement for the Quadra map. Now let's go over to the, I should say Quadra battlefield. Now I'll go over to the Lene battlefield. And well, 
Should I go in the Wang Lini? I think so. It's the only way we're going to find out what's there. Dee 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 dee. Whoop. 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 Oh, I don't discover anything. Oh, how nice. That is nice. Okay. Sleep at the switch, eh? Let's take this cavalry regiment and go down here and secure this road junction right there. And I'm going to move the artillery battery down by this other road junction. Yeah, might as well move this leader down here. Okay, that turned out well. So I went through Wag Wagner Lee, and it looks like there's no uh, Prussian units there. How fortunate. Oh. Oh, this other cavalry unit, you can see here on the sidebar, it's still disordered. Okay, maybe it'll recover next turn. That was a pain in the ass. So, let's see if we can cross the stream with these guys. Yeah, how nice. Okay, I really can get into the city here. So, that's always nice when it's unopposed. Maybe he'll move up there now. But I got my cal the cavalry is blocking this entrance and I've already got units into the city, so we're looking good there. Because obviously if I can occupy the city, that's a great flank protection of all the units marching down this road to the Prussian rear. Okay, that's good. Now, slowly move these guys through the woods here. Well, almost got through. This pathway consumes double the movement of a normal road. But, we're getting through. Now, I seem to recall something that I really can't move these supply units on a path. They take like quadruple the movement, so I'm going to move them through this open area. I don't need them for a while, so it's okay if they lag behind a little. It's not like I'm going to run out of ammunition anytime soon. I'm I'm unsure whether at what point I'm gonna really have a firefight with the Prussians. I'm, I don't know whether they're gonna come out on open ground or just say stay huddled up in their cities. I hope they stay huddled up in their cities. It'll be interesting to see how they react if they decide to come out and oppose my encirclement or not. If it was Blucher in charge, he'd sure come out. That guy was, actually he was nuts, certifiably nuts. And he went nuts at the end of the Napoleonic War. I think they had to put him in a rubber room, but he was pretty nuts during the war. He, did, he really didn't have all of his marbles. I don't think he lived that long after the 
after 1815. Thought he only lived a couple years. It's kind of an old guy anyway for that time. I, I think he was in his late 60s. For, for that age, that was pretty old. Well, steadily moving up here. Oh, come on. Must not be pressing it hard enough. Oh, okay. Two more supply units. Come on. Oh, no wonder I'm moving off the mouse pad here and cl clicking into the air. Okay, now these guys are just hanging out here to see if anybody comes through the open ground here, over here. Oh, we've got a line battalion and two skirmishers, huh? Okay, let's see what happens when they see cavalry coming. Oh, that cavalry moved up there. Quite a ways. I don't think they're going to like that. Shit, I got disordered. Why? Why? Well, that kind of screws up my movement now. Glad I got those two units up there. So I can't move anymore with the disorder. Sometimes, you know, it's funny in this game, sometimes a unit will cross like a ridge or something like this and there'll be no problem. And then two or three units will cross without problem and the third unit will get disordered. I guess it's a random thing. There must be some peculiarity in terrain that maybe a unit with low morale or something. What is there morale on this disordered unit? Hey! Ah, Jesus! Well, it sure wasn't morale. It's the best morale you can get. I don't know why it disordered. The first two units didn't disorder, but I've had that happen before. It might just be a random, kind of a pain in the ass, but thank God I got at least two cal cavalry regiments across. Well, let's start moving these guys down. Wow, oh, that's a leader, no wonder. Uh, Got real excited here. Wow. There, that's as far as the infantry can move, which is still pretty good. Well, better check the time here to see. I don't want these to run much over an hour. Oh, 39 minutes. Uh, 40. So I've got 20 minutes, 55, okay, okay, another 20 minutes, that's good. I can finish the movement in 20 minutes, easy. Whoop. Well, I want to 
do is unclog this road and move all of these units out beyond the reach of the Prussians. Okay, what have I got here? Mounted. How did he get down there? He's a purple, which is these guys. He should be up there, not down here. Yeah. Oh, he's in line. Move him off to the side. Let's see if I can put him in column. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's move this artillery down here. And this guy. And this guy. pretty well. Now what I'm going to do, he can only see, the Prussians can only see this one um, cavalry unit on the ridge. I'm going to put other ones up on the ridge so he sees it and thinks maybe he's under imminent threat of attack. which will buy me a little more time to evacuate everybody here. I need as much time as I can get to make sure everybody gets away. Okay, this is a pioneer and he's in column. Okay, that's good. And he's in column. We'll take him. Oh, what's this? Just leaders. Oh, artillery battery there. So we'll put him on the road. Put him on the road. This is another mounted guy. So I'll put him in reserve and put this guy in the road. And this is a string of leaders. We'll send them down the road here up to the front of the column till they run out of movement. Okay, that's good for them. Put this guy here. All right, that's pretty good. So we cleared out. This area in here, it's held by that cavalry. Now this, I wish I could get out of here faster. If he wasn't in that cropland and on that ridge, I'd charge him. I'm going to put another unit here. Now, if, if he moves on this hex here, I think he's going to expend all his movement. So he can try to move around here 
We'll see if he does that. Stack up all the leaders and move this guy away. This cavalry I need to I need it to remain in place, so we'll move these guys down here. This guy will move up the road. Oh good. Gets pretty close. Okay, I do believe Oop, that's my move. Oh, almost left this guy behind. God, and he's morale A. It's like guards quality. Okay. So I'm slowly swinging around here. Okay. That's it. We'll go on to the next phase. Allied defensive fire. Oh, he fired. Oh, he got nine men this time. Hmm. So 15 men all together. Uh, it's starting to add up. French offensive fire. Uh, I've got none. French melee. Got none. Allied movement. Now uh, let's see what he's going to be up to. Okay, we're on the uh, Quad de Bras front. Oh! His unit moved back from this flank position. How interesting. These guys moved up slightly. Oh yeah, now they're deploying for an attack. Jeez, there's a bunch of them too. Artillery there. Uh, we're over on the Lene front. Okay, look at, I moved up the cavalry, so these guys are like backing off a little and huddling up, which is the effect I wanted. So I guess they're afraid uh, they'll get a cavalry attack, but it's not going to happen across the ridge or uh, hedge. Okay, what else is going on here? Oh, oh, these units just popped up, and these units. So they're what going to come across here, or they think they're going to come down here? They're kind of lagging back, I think, because they saw the cavalry. Oh, I don't want to deploy against the firefight in this area. We'll see if I have to. I hope not. See, I don't know why they're coming out anyway. I mean, when Napoleon fought them, they didn't come out. They huddled up in the, city, the village and they awaited uh, Napoleon's attack. Why are they coming out now? God, that's super aggressive. And look what they're coming out in. There's like a, a half circle here of units. What are you going to achieve except get massacred? Well, they screw up my timetable. I mean, the guard's right here. Jesus, you don't want to come out in that direction. And look at all the stuff that's coming down this road. It, all I have to do is, is go up like that. Maybe it's just a faint. I don't think he's going to come out on this open ground. We'll see, I guess. French defensive fire, okay. I still don't have any fire. 
And I know what he's going to do. He's going to try to, yeah. No effect. Fired there. Oh, nine, 18 men. Jesus, I'm going to have to back up. I'm starting to get some decent fire there. Melee. None. French movement again. Okay. Okay, the first thing I'll do is I'll back up here. And I'll back up two hexes and turn around and do the same here. Now, here's what this did. Now, in order to fire on me, he's got to come out in this clear hex. And if he comes out in this clear hex, he's going to get charged by these two units. So we'll see how brave he is now. Okay, let's go up to the quarter bra front. Oh, Jesus, these guys are building up here. But fortunately, I think I'll be gone by the time he moves forward. Well, it's interesting. If this these two units were one hex lower, I would charge them. But here, I can only charge them, him with this u one unit, and I don't know if it'd be enough. I, I could probably disrupt him, but I'd probably disrupt myself. But if he was over here, I could charge him with two units and I'd do it, two regiments. So I'll wait and see what he's going to do. I'm not sure he's going to get much closer to me. He might bring the skirmishes closer, but I don't know if he's going to bring those columns closer. See, he's got a, um artillery battery under here. He's probably going to deploy it next turn. Is it horse artillery? I can't tell. If it's not horse artillery, it'll be, if it's foot artillery, it'll be another, uh, wow, that's a major commitment here he's made. He's got two battalions, three, four battalions. That's a lot for the force he has now. He's got another battalion out here, and I don't know what he's doing. Is he going to try to go down this road? Why didn't he go up higher and get on this uh, path? We'll see what he's going to do. He's got mostly skirmishers here. And I know what he's going to do. He's going to try to surround everything here and break through. But I'll have a surprise for him. Okay, let's take care of our movement here. Where are we? Now, let's go out here and see if there's anything in that direction. And anything here. Guess not. Okay, we'll, 
What division is this? The, the ninth. So we're swinging the ninth division out to the flank. That's the last unit of the 9th Division. So I'm going to swing this small cavalry brigade right behind these guys. And then, what is this? I think this is the 6th Division. Yep, Prince Jerome. That loser. So we'll get most of this division clear. That's very good. Oh, I still got a bunch of battalions there. This is turn four out of 36 turns. So things are progressing well, I think, for the French at this point. Now what I hope happens is that sooner or later he reacts to my flank attack and then the British allocate most of their forces against that and leave this area clear and then the first corps arrives from the south that would be nice Okay, here's the cavalry. They're going to parallel the infantry move. Okay, now what to do about this? I think we'll extend the flank here and look more menacing. Let's see if that has any effect on his demeanor. Let's get this artillery out of the way.
Now up here. Nice thing about the French is you you can they almost all of their units can deploy skirmishers. So out of this unit, I'll go to column and press control S and I'll deploy a skirmisher. So you can see a new unit popped up, 91 men strong. And so it will go up this uh, path and block that crossing of the stream. And in this rear unit, I also can deploy, you can deploy one skirmish per battalion. So I'll deploy a skirmish there. And march that up the road. Let's see what I want to do, right or left. Huh. Probably right. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I couldn't move into there, so I might as well move into there. Okay, over here. Let's get rid of these damn leaders so I can see what's what here. Okay, I can deploy a skirmish from there, which I'll do. And he'll block movement along that side. I'll deploy another skirmish from here. Whoop. He'll cross the stream here and block that. So these guys are, well, he can still move there, but... Uh, so I don't think I'll be able to reach that hex. I'll deploy another skirmisher. Cross the stream and go there. So they're pretty much boxed in. Now I can deploy another skirmisher up here. We'll cross the stream and block off that. And another skirmisher. Uh, oop, can't cross the stream. That's okay. Now, these guys are in column. I'll put them in line. So, in, whoop, in case some skirmishers break through, I'll be able to fire at them. And these are going to be fixed position units anyway. It's not like I'm going to move them around and maneuver with them, so might as well make sure they have the maximum firepower. And I'll turn that one to the right. Uh, what is that? And, okay, so that's a really strong position. Now let me check the time, because I think it's probably gone. Yep, one hour and four minutes. Okay. So we'll end this session, and then uh, we'll continue the move in the next session.